to the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's dates March 17th, Sunday's edition, 2019. And Miss Vegas, what is going to be our watch list? Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and hope you're ready for tomorrow is Monday. I just can't, I just love Mondays, and I hope you do too. So today's list to get you ready for the week is going to be ACB, HRVSF, which is the OTC stock, TLRA, BA. KEG, CIDM, and CVRS. So let's get started and talk about ACB. So you guys know Aurora Cannabis. Uh, that is a Canadian company. And uh, they had some big news the other day. And I don't know if you guys saw it. I mean, this company's out in Edmonton. And um, they announced that they hired a strategic advisor. And the gentleman they hired is Nelson Peltz. Well, let me tell you who this guy is. I mean, this man is a major billionaire. He is the uh, chief executive of a and a founding partner of a company called Try and Fund Management, which is a multi-billion dollar investment firm. He's also the non-executive chairman of Wendy's and a director at Procter & Gamble, Cisco, and Madison Square Garden Company. He used to actually work at H.J. Hines. He's worked at Mondelez and many, many other uh, companies. And um, he is definitely going to bring uh, some great clout to Aurora Cannabis. The other thing I do want to mention is, um, you know, this gentleman here, Nelson Peltz. Well, you know what, at one time, you know, he did not start out like this and money was just not handed to him on a silver platter. You know, go way back if you if you were to read his bio. Um, you know, he started off back in New York. He actually went to um, a undergraduate program at the Wharton School of Business and then he went to University of Pennsylvania. But you know what, guess what? Never completed his degree, he dropped out of school. And he decided that he would become maybe a ski instructor. And then he started uh, to work for his family's um, wholesale food distribution business, which was founded by his grandfather. And he was delivering fresh produce and frozen food. So he was an actual uh, delivery driver. And uh, what ended up happening is uh, his father after being with the comp after his son was with the company for quite some time uh decided that um him and his brother uh should start running the company well let me tell you obviously you know even though he dropped out of school never completed his degree he obviously had some sort of you know uh good you know natural talent and that's why i say to people i don't care about your educational background if you have the passion and desire to want to do well you can do well. So it doesn't matter what background you come from. Educational backgrounds not required to learn about stocks. Um, so going back to uh, Nelson, um, he's been, him and his brother took over the business. And then after 10 years, they just, you know, throughout the years, they started buying up other companies and they started, um, you know, growing the business and uh, slowly, 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 um, they evolved and then they built it into a fortune 100 industrial company and uh you know that's how they just started making more and more money and then he became an activist investor he was investing in heinz he invested in Kraft foods wendy's dupont pepsi you name it he was he was in it and um that's how he became to where he was if you'd like to read more about his background i will definitely include his information in our video below and I think it's a good read, and I'm so excited that he's actually been hired as a strategic advisor to ACB. And even from the time that I posted this news um, on social media, I mean, the stock's gone up a dollar twenty-four, which is almost you know fourteen point six seven percent. Longer term, you know, Aurora Cannabis has a really strong future. Uh, I don't think the marijuana sector, you know, people think that, oh, because, you know, pot is now legal in so many states and in so many provinces that the marijuana sector phase is, you know, it's kind of good. It's going to die down. 
uh, similar to, you know, how Bitcoin was a pop and drop. Well, I don't think it's the same thing. I mean, I think it's just still getting started. Um, I think ACB, if someone likes longer term um, holds, I think this is a good one in my personal opinion. Again, I'm not a licensed advisor. I'm not registered. I'm just giving like, my personal thoughts. Um, I, I kind of like the stock longer term. I think longer term, this could go to 18 and maybe even in the 20s. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk with us about this amazing chart and, um, you know, what does Aurora look like? Because at one time, this stock was priced a lot more than what it is even today. Um, so I think this still has room for movement. And I turn it over to Jim, our chartist artist. Jim, let's hear about Aurora. What a, what a great fund. What a great analysis there, Miss Vegas. So what we have here is the year's chart. And we do have a year high of 1253 with a resistance of about 1230. So I drew up this little channel right here on the year's chart, and this is what I expect from it. And I'm gonna bring this down to 180 day. In this stock, I do believe very much so that it is way undervalued. I've been saying it for a while. And then last week when Nelson got involved in the company, it was just a wonderful catalyst for this to go ahead and break resistance. I wanna see it break $10 tomorrow and get the new buyers in from $10, we can run this all the way up to prob probably about, I'm saying 1047 to 1076, with another little resistance right there, at a little under 11 bucks. And then if it breaks at 11, we're gonna shoot her up to at least 1250, and then she's gonna go ahead and hit the other catalysts and move on up long-term. So I'm gonna pull this now down to a 20 day. And that trend line I drone right there hits that $10 mark. And I got into some options on this stock here, and I'm up pretty good on it. And um, so I'll probably go ahead and, and pick up some more positions in my regular account and maybe scalp it in my other one. I have three different accounts that I trade with, an options, a scalper, and then a swing trade account. So let's see if it, if it does want to pull back a little bit, which I don't think it's really in the mood because it did hit that double top after hours. And that double top was right around 971, pretty close to it at 969 where she closed at. And I think if it does pull back a little bit, you got two different support levels, one here at 61 and the other one right here at 53. And I don't really see it going much lower than that. If it does, it'll pull back to this previous high that we had a couple days ago, which was at 924. And I'm telling you right there, that's going to be a strong buy if it does do that. But let's get it past $10 come Monday morning or Monday and run up, get the new buyers in and run that up to about 12 something. And this is ACB and I sure do love this stock and I do believe it is very undervalued. That's great. I love hearing that. And uh, don't you think that Nelson kind of looks like Howard from Stock Twits? Did oh, you yeah. show the viewers his picture? He looks like a very <laughs> happy soul, that's for sure. He looks like a nice man, nice yeah. and handsome like Howard. And he looks healthy you guys too. look alike. All right, so let's talk now about um, HRVSF. Okay, so this is a new one for you guys. Um, so HRVSF is listed on the OTC markets. This is called Harvest Health and Recreation. So this company is a um, consistently profitable, just so you know. And they have a really large, one of the largest footprints in the U.S. And... Um, they have 425 employees and in-house expertise. Uh, they have, uh, you know, started back in 2011 and they've grown every year and they've got licenses in over 10 states with expansion into additional states by 2020. And um, this company here, I uh, just want to talk about, just backtrack a little bit. Um, they had, um, they finalized a $70 million Florida medical cannabis acquisition. And I think I talked about this way back then, um, uh, that they were going to have um, this acquisition in Florida. And uh, they were going to actually have um, marijuana medical treatment centers, which allowed them to have up to 25 dispensaries in Florida. So this is really great um, what they're doing. And uh, the latest news is what I really want to talk to you guys about. So the CEO, uh, he was on um, TV the other day and he was actually speaking that, 
you know, marijuana is just the start. It's just starting. And um, recently, this past week, you know, the same company, Harvest Health and Recreation, they bought their competitor called Verano Holdings. They bought them for eight hundred and fifty million dollars in an all stock deal, making the largest U.S. cannabis deal to date. The company combined will be one of the country's largest multi-state operators, presiding in over as many as 200 facilities in 16 states. Now, Stephen White, who's the co-founder and CEO of Harvest, has a clear vision of how this Verano will help increase and bolster Harvest positioning in the developing U.S. pot industry. And, you know, he did mention that, you know, we're in a phase that people are referring to as a land grab. He says, you know, we plan on developing the largest retail footprint. We want the largest retail platform in the U.S. And he feels that with this acquisition, they've really done that. Um, you know, Harvest does operate in Arizona, California, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania. And you know what? They're not done. They're going to open new locations in Michigan, North Dakota, Massachusetts. And um, they're also going to add Illinois and Nevada to the list, as well as plans for locations in Puerto Rico, Oklahoma, and New Jersey. So this is just amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, you guys, I'm, like I'm telling you, you got to pay attention to this company too. And, um, you know, this stock, I just want to mention, does trade on the Canadian uh, Securities Exchange as well. Uh, it went up over 3% Friday. It's already gone up 14% uh, for the week. And uh, it's also obviously on the OTC stock. And that's climbed, just so you know, more than 52% year to date. So, Jim, I'm going to turn this over to you because, you know, at one time, this company, year, I think a year ago, I believe was at 21 cents. So let's hear about the stock because this is one to definitely watch. Yep, it sure is. And I'm going to pull up as far as back as I can go with this one right here. And that was back here on um, oh, second 12-19. So we're, we're up here at a triple top. We had did have a triple top high of 845. Resistance on here is right around the 831 area. I'd like to see this pull back a little bit so I can get in it, but who knows, man. I'm really uh, hyper about this stock right now after this latest news. I think it's a big catalyst to maybe have some sympathy plays in this department, in this sector. So some other stocks that you've been watching, you might want to put them back on the watch list again with ACB running and then this Harvest uh, Health and Recreation uh, dot com stock I think this is really going to be a good one to get into so I'm going to play a pullback on this and if I do think it'll pull back any it'll be right around here around the eight dollar level 798 and then I've got a little pivot point area on this play it's going to be right around set 807 and we did pull back to that looks like after hours let me pull up the five minute or one minute three yeah so we did have a little pullback down here to that seven dollars just right after right before close and it did pop back up right here to about 812 to the 820 area and I'm going to draw me another trend line right here at 829 so I'm definitely going to have this one on watch I think it's going to be a, a, a catalyst for other stocks to run with it and this one here is definitely going to be on my watch list because I think this one with this latest news it'll bring it up higher and we'll break that resistance level of 830 on 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 friday and let me pull this up one more time back to the 20 day that resistance level is at 835 so that's what we got to break i do believe we're going to see it you can see the trend line right here and i'm going to draw a little trend line parallel to each other right here and that low support right about there and then bring it up to the resistance level of these two wicks on the candle and that's right around 842 change that to white real fast and then we'll add this to my default so i won't have to do this no more so this is the where we're going to take it to i want to see a resistance high of 848 after we break this 835 and let's get it up back up to the ten dollar mark 
you just see it does cap kind of a little nice little pullbacks in consolidated area we did have a nice breakout on a friday and it did pull back to the previous high and bounced right up of it and it looks like after hours it's at 810 and we're going to see if we can take this up to the top of this trend line level and that's right around 848 and then we got to break that and bring it up to the ten dollar mark but I think this is one you definitely have to have on your watch list, along with ACB, Cron, CGC, Tillery, and a few others that we've mentioned in the past. And that's HRVSF. And the next one is TLRA. Yes, so you guys know we have talked about Telleria. And you know what? We are not done. I mean, this stock's just you know ongoing new 52 week highs went as high as 606 had a little bit of a pullback um but you know what this stock to me still bullish i mean I had a major volume surge happening and um i think the stock still bullish and room for the stock to move more now i did tell you guys what the what the companies involved in they provide you know people that have uh they're in the video business they have people advertising uh, you know, if you're a content owner or publisher, um, you know, they are, they basically help people brand their stories to audiences um, and they make the software uh, for that so that you can rely on it so that you can unlock value of your own content. Uh, very ambitious team, uh, very good uh, platform, very good product. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this company is definitely has a, a nice future. So I just turn it over to Jim here to talk about this amazing chart because again, really like to give people swing trade ideas um, because you know we don't need to wait for things to be alerted on scanners. I mean, just try, gotta find good setups for a good move. And if you're not in this particular one, um, it's still uh, bullish for a swing trade continuation. Uh, so I'm gonna let Jim talk about supports and resistance. And this might be something for those of you that like to do swing trades or that don't trade full time. Um, you may want to add this to your potential list of stocks that you may consider for your own uh, portfolio. So, Jim, over to you on that chart. Well, here's another beautiful channel again. We did have a huge breakout on this stock when we called it back, and it's really had a real nice run. I mean, this thing was down here at 314, and we've created almost 100% run on this stock in about less than three weeks. So let's look at the year's chart. We are at a 52-week high. As you can see right here, we hit that 606 and it pulled back to 596 after hours. And I'm going to pull up a three year just to have a glance. Three year high also, you see we broke out of that three year high breakout resistance at 529. And if this, so we're going to bring it up now to a daily three minute. And I'm going to try to find where I think this could pull back, if any at all. But we are, I'm really liking this double top that we did after hours. We did have a 606 double top and it did pull back a little bit just within five minute or oh, 15 minute period. And then she pulled back to that 100 SMA. And you can see that the 20 tried to curl down a little bit, but just couldn't break under that 50, start to curl back up. And that's when we had that resistance high up here of around 604. So I'm gonna put a trend line right there at what I think it needs to break out of, and that's that 606 area to get to the new high. So this is a 52 week high. So these are gonna be the two support levels that I'm gonna look at. It's gonna be in this little channel right in here at 588 to 606. And that's not really a big margin. So if you're not in this trade, I would not rush it. I would wait for a little pullback to get in it. And I'm thinking no lower than 588 with maybe a support level right around here at 602 and that's not very much from where it is right now so let's see if we can get back down just a little bit farther a little bit farther to maybe at 588 if it doesn't pull back there then we'll go ahead and jump in it this is tlra this has been a great call by vegas and i love stocks and the next one we're going to talk about is one that i missed out on friday but a lot of people in the room got in it and that was ba yeah, so you know what? We want to talk about Boeing very quickly. And Jim, I just sent you a screenshot there if you could show it. Um, oh, yeah. So we just had, uh, you know, Boeing had that bad news and uh, people were like, you know, bearish on the stock. But, <clears throat> you know, we were looking at it on Friday. You know, the stock opened at 370.88. And you know what? Um, Rich, who loves helping people with smaller accounts, 
as well. He spotted an opportunity on, on BA and he said, you know what, this is looking bullish right now. And I was thinking that we were both kind of thinking the same thing at the same time. And he says, you know what, let's get an option call for 370 and they were going and they're expiring the same day so again this is a little risky when you buy an option that expires the same day because you're technically really just scalping it you know um so that's why it was not expensive because it expired that same day um so the stock the option call was for a 370 call it was going at a dollar 12 which is a hundred and twelve dollar investment and about maybe t uh, 15 minutes later i said you know what ba is long uh, based on a technical bullish alert that I had noticed on the platform and I was looking at the chart and the alert was I alerted the stock at 366.84 and you know what um, it was just I caught it at the low of the day because the low of the day was 366.45 so I alerted it as well because we have a lot of large cap traders that love uh, to scalp these and so between Rich's call and my call let me tell you that stock went as high to 385.71. But what I love the most is this, because I mean, I'm not gonna buy the stock because that's just, I don't know how many, I'd have to buy so many shares to make a good profit. But let me tell you something. There was a few people that bought the option call and put in $112 on the line, because that's what they're risking is the 112, okay? And uh, because we did say it's risky because the option expires today. So you could actually lose the $112. Uh, if the stock doesn't go in the right direction. So that's uh, the most you'd lose is 112, unless, of course, you cut your losses sooner. Um, but anyhow, the nice story about this is that the stock was bullish. We called it perfectly. And the stock went as high, like I said, of 385. And that option contract went from three, from a dollar twelve, one hundred and twelve dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. It went to fifteen dollars. I was like, holy crap, like people sold it like when it doubled and tripled. But my gosh, there were so many people losing their mind because they're like, oh, my God, it's going higher. I mean, it was going to seven dollar, eight dollar, ten dollar. I mean, this turned into like a fifteen hundred dollar value of a contract that you could have just sold, even if you didn't wait that long, because, you know, when it goes up, you know, that fast, that high, you got to take that money. So. I don't know anyone that would have held it all the way to the $15, but you know, even if it went to like the $10 contract, that was a thousand dollars. Like your profit would have been like $896. Um, like that is, you know, that's just amazing. Okay. So congratulations to people that got this in our room in real time. So that's why I tell people, even if you can't trade all the time, uh, it's nice to just come by and you know you can learn with these things you know it gives you an opportunity to hopefully make some money so um you don't have to be a full-time trader you could even be part-time and you only have a day off or a morning off then you know come by the room and check it out um so jim over to you on that ba because i'd love to hear what's going on because you know everyone has their own opinion but i really just want to hear yours yeah well the unfortunate circumstances for this stock to drop and bless their souls this stock dropped and consolidated right here around 366 and Rich identified that bottom because it touched down there about four or five times in the last uh, last week and that would have been a good idea to get in and, and that's what, what happened. The thing went ahead and bounced on up past uh, at that support level in that morning at 366.78 had a kind of a solid base right there at 368.21 and then she went ahead and hit this other trend line that I have here for a resistance or it used to be a support at one time and then she went ahead and got a pivot point right here and pulled back a little bit to after hours to that 378.60 but we rolled this up before because of the news of that that jet plane that they were supersonic jet plane that they're putting together it ran all the way up to a 446 high and then she went ahead and had that tragic accident and then pulled on back and consolidated that little support. So I think we're going to keep this on watch for this week. I've got the trend lines here. You go ahead and please pause the video and, and copy and paste it and use them for your and compare them to your supports. Never follow any other trader. Try to follow yourself. But we do have a little pretty good little pivot point area right here at 378.14. And I do believe that 
it can pull back a little bit to maybe the moving averages, but we do have a hard resistance right at $400 on this trade. So it can run up to that 400 and create a new channel here. And it'll probably do it for a while. Um, that's about all I can really say right now about this trade. I'll be watching it very closely Monday. It was my, my unfortunate mistake for not getting in it Friday. And I guess that's the way it goes sometimes. We can't hit them all. But we do have another support right here at 376. I do like that area. I'm going to put that as a red trend line for maybe a possible entry. At 376, let me turn this red real fast. Make that a two. I like the fat trend line there. But at 376.04, looks like a very good position to get in this trade right now. And if that don't hold, it'll come back to this 374.80. And I'm going to put that on there too. And this is BA, and the next one we're going to talk about is keg, and I'm not talking about beer. <laughs> no, so you guys know, especially those that watch my videos with Jam, uh, I've talked about keg energy services, and you know, I talked about this way before it was on scanners. This is back, you know, going back to um, March the 5th, and uh, the stock back then went as, um, you know, 316-ish. And even the next day was as low as 302 and said, you know what, still bullish because energy stocks were hot. And look where the stock is now. We are at $6.15. And, you know, this was mentioned not that long ago. Okay. So this is why it pays to listen and watch the videos because you can really learn about swing trading and learn about really good setups, especially when Jim gives you guys the supports and resistance. I'm still bullish on the stock this had an expansion breakout on friday and i noticed it was popping like crazy on scanners the stock is overbought had a major volume surge as well if you guys look at the volume it was over a million shares traded on friday and the last time we had that kind of volume was back on march 4th and 5th and back then the stock was three dollars and 45 cents and look where we are now a nice beautiful six dollars and 15 cent close it went as high though as 642 but you know what still bullish on the stock and i think there's room for a potential continuation come tomorrow and jim what are your thoughts on the keg because it's an energy stock and uh it's doing quite well performed yeah i think it's one of these stocks that really got oversold too much I mean, if I'm just looking at the year's chart. We had a high up here at $18.40 with a resistance of right around $17.83. And you can see, and this is what kind of puzzled me because of this hard sell-off we had back in, in December, but a lot of stocks sold off back then. So this would have been a great opportunity if I had been watching this stock and had it on my watch list. I would have definitely probably jumped in this trade at $1.59, maybe right around this $2 area, because that, that, that really defined itself. But that harsh sell-off in December, which was the worst month of the year, pulled this all the way down from $7.96 all the way to $1.59. So it was definitely way oversold, way oversold compared to what it was last year at $18.40. So I think Miss Vegas is right. This is one heck of a breakout. Last four days, it's popped up from 325 to 615, almost 100% gain in four days. And, you know, something like that can pull back just a little bit. But the way it's running right now, I don't think it can. I think the momentum's picked up on it. Here's a five-day, five-minute chart with a beautiful little trend line that's gone up. These are the five days that I'm talking about that it did have a nice little breakout every morning. Pulled back and found a channel almost every day. And we even did that Friday. And then at the end of the day, she decided people started really getting the interest in this trade. From 537, it ran all the way up to 642. So that's almost a 90 cent bounce, almost. And it didn't pull back to 620. Now the way I play this is I'll play it off my moving average. I have the 20, so I want to see it kiss off on the 20 SMA. And that's probably where I'd jump in it. And that'd be, man, this is constantly moving throughout the day. So I'll be watching that and I'll also be watching the 50. Now I do believe it can touch the 50. And if these trend lines start to squeeze together, that means it's getting ready to consolidate and to break out. 
And these are my four moving averages that I really appreciate. And that's the 200, the 100, the 50, and the 20. And they're all in lined up for it to go ahead and continue up to go up. Now, if this 20 was below these other ones, I would see negativity and I'd wait for the pullback to support right here at 536, 543, somewhere in that area. But I'm not really looking for that. If anything at all, it'll pull back to 578 and then go ahead and continue the run up. It does pull back a little bit, but not very much. Now 25, 30 cents is quite a bit of money when you're flipping dollars. So let's keep a good eye on CAG. I'm going to go ahead and show you where I think the next resistance will be on this stock, and that's going to be up here at around 664. And I'm going to pull up, that was the 20-day, and see if we can get some more trend lines. No, I can't, so I'm going to go to the 90, 4-hour, and this is what I'm looking at. And I see a little bit of support level resistance right here also. So i got three different resistances for next couple of days, and then maybe another one right above it. Let's call it 4 and that's going to be, and let's magnify this up a little bit. So these are the four resistances I'm going to be looking at. 664, 684, 725, and then 759, 760. With a pullback, no more than this, um, oh, I'd say this little channel right in here from 588 to 6 bucks. If it goes below that, it's going to be a strong buy at the 578 level. And that's CAG, and very excited about how we picked this trade out. Especially in the last five days, it's just been a beautiful run. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be CIDM. Yes, so CIDM. Well, you know, this company is the leading independent entertainment studio in North America. And they're recognized for their film and TV and digital productions and content market distributions. So, you know, they're into, you know, they got relationships, you know, they have, uh, for example, they do like digital platforms for companies like Walmart, Target, Amazon. Um, they do video on demand. They got, um, you know, huge um, connections across um, the, you know, 60,000 retail storefronts. Um, they also into digital cinemas. Um, they are into um, innovative virtual print-free digital rollouts for the exhibition industry, which is now deployed over um, 12,000 screens. They also have partners with Century Fox, Disney DreamWorks, Lionsgate, Paramount, Sony, Universal, Warner Brothers, Weinstein, and hundreds of independent distributors. I shouldn't have said Weinstein's name because I don't like that guy. Um, anyhow, so CIDM, let's focus here on the chart. Uh, I picked this one as a swing trade because you know what? It's had a nice 52-week closing high. It's had a nice volume surge, and I really like the pocket pivot. And um, I believe that this stock has a continuation coming up. If you guys look at the chart, you know, earlier uh, this year, I mean, even back to January, I mean, this stock was below 60 cents. I mean, talk about a deal. But look at the channel this has started to form from basically January up to now. All the stock keeps doing slowly but surely. And I like the pace that it's moving. The uh, shares in the float is 14.27. Uh, and a uh, million and you know you could see that the stock is slowly slowly climbing up higher high you know keeps going and look at this at where it's at now i mean it closed here at um a dollar 82 and i'm liking it and i think there's going to be room for this to go a little higher so i think the chart's very powerful and uh, turn it over to Jim here to talk to us about that because I like this also for a swing trade idea. All right. Well, this is what I'm looking at right now. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart first. If I can find it. There we go. We did break out of the year high resistance level. And that resistance was right at 181 on that wick. I would put the candle base probably right around the... Uh, 175 area i think this is a uh, cheap stock for the money it was down here at 48 cents back during that killer slam we had on 
last December, 48 cents. And now we're up here at 180 and we had a 189 high. It closed at 182. So these are my next resistances that I'm looking at. And that's going to be above the $2, 205. And I'm going to pull up a three-year chart. And these extended trend lines are the ones that I had on here last year that I played this stock last year. On the pullback and the bounces and the few breakouts that it did have. And this last trend line, this last channel that I'm looking at is really beautiful. So let's pull up a three-year. You can see it did have some previous highs. It did have a three dollar high on the on the previous year, and it, we did hit that once before, right here back on uh, six twenty six two thousand seventeen. We're definitely in a nice little trend right now, and we're we're hitting a resistance level that we had previous year of right around one seventy seven one seventy eight. So let me pull that one year's chart back up, and we did break that. That 181 area is where we're talking about, and it did close at 182. So you see the channel right here. This is a very beautiful little channel right here. So it's got some it's got some motion. And I did call my crystal ball came out and said, start watching these stocks that have, have dipped on you that are on your watch list. So if this was one of them that was on your watch list, this would have been a great one to get in at. So I've got a resistance on the trend at 186. We did hit a 189. And your next resistance is gonna be at the 205 area. So you're gonna use $2 as your imaginary focus. That's the one you wanna hit. Now if this thing pulls back, it can pull back to that previous yearly high on the, on the wick, which is 181 and that's where we are. So you wanna go back one step below it to where the base of this candle is at 175, 174. And that's where that double top hit. And that's going to be a solid support at 175. So I wouldn't chase this stock. What I would do is I'd wait because this last candle here is almost like a, a doji. And that means it could break up some more or, and, or consolidate here for the next couple of days and then move on up to that next resistance, which I'm going to call just under two bucks, two dollars, two dollars and five cents, somewhere in that area. Pullback support, like I said before, is going to be right at 174. If you're looking at the tr channel, and I'm not quite, don't think that's quite accurate, 172, but somewhere in that area. This is CIDM. Keep it on focus, keep it on watch. Don't chase it, but definitely look at the pattern that it's had here in the last three months. Very, very impressive. And the last one we're going to talk about is CVRS. Okay, so you all know I've talked about this one, and CVRS is the one that's called Corindus Vascular Robotics. Now, I did not have a position at the time, but I took one Friday, and I took a swing trade on this one uh, because of the fact that I told you guys I love what the company's doing uh, with the robotics, and you know they're into the cardiovascular. And, um, you know, I gave you guys the information on uh, why, you know, what this company's involved in. And just, just to, this, the technology just floors me. But again, what excites me the most is that they're waiting for this FDA approval. And if they get it, they will be the first in the world. And I told you guys that being first is what counts. Um, especially, to, in my opinion, with the catalyst, okay? Um, so anyhow, the stock had a nice move. So if you did remember from the video we did on Wednesday to, or Thursday to actually look to take a trade on this stock, you would have already been green, um, because the stock opened up at $1.84 on Friday and, uh, went all the way already to 201 was the high. It closed at 198, but you know what? The stock is still bullish. It had a new 52-week closing high. It's also had an expansion breakout. And you know what? A nice volume surge. Look at that volume, guys. Uh, volume on Friday was 3.489 million. I have not seen this kind of volume in, let me see. Uh, last time I saw a huge volume like this was back in June 8, 2018. It had five point three million shares traded and then the time before that was back in may 
So we haven't seen any kind of volume like this basically since June was the last time it had a major volume surge and I'm loving what I'm seeing. Uh, volume just gets higher and higher and higher over the last, you know, five, six, seven trading days. Uh, so Jim, over to you on this chart, because I know you talked about it already yeah. the, on the video we did uh, just the other day, but can you, would you mind talking about it again, just in case some people missed watching the video and refresh everyone's memory? Yeah, and, and also I'm posting on here, it's got three upcoming events coming up in April and May. So that could be, also could be a catalyst Oh yeah, because they're doing, you know, they're going to be on a couple uh, seminars and presentations. So they're yeah. going to be, like I said, showcasing their their robotics mm -hmm. and talking about it. So I think there's going to be some hype on the stock too. Yeah. Uh, you know, starting even next month because that's the next time they'll be showcasing it is April and May. But they'll be in Vegas. So I think there's more to come with this company. Yeah, so let's hear about the chart. Okay. Well, we did break out of the early high, which was a double top. Well, this area right in here, she did try to do it. She pulled back to <laughs> 70 cents, and then she ran up and hit that previous high up in here. Couldn't quite get to the previous high, but then pulled back, back in that December again, back down here to 79, pretty close to that low support down here. And then here lately, she's had a nice little run. And she's followed that 20 SMA all the way up. And that's what I like about these simple moving averages. They're very simple for swing traders. And we also got the 50 crossing up over the 100, which is giving it some bullish sediment. And we're gonna bring this up to now, what I would say the 20 day. And you can see the wedge that we're working on right now. It, it's, it's creating definitely the lower highs and then, then the higher highs are keep going up too but it's starting to squeeze a little bit for another breakout but i mean this has been a nice little breakout in its own from 137 all the way up to uh, to the double top area here at 204 and that's what we did after hours we went ahead and closed at 198 and then we had that double top right after hours at two dollars and four cents so let me bring up the one day three minute then I'm going to draw a little trend line right here at the $2 area for support. And then I'm going to put another one right, ooh, I love this one right here. This 195. I really like that 195 because it hit that bottom of that trend line. And that's a double confirmation along hitting that 100. And that's what it hit right in between close, right down here at 192. So let's call this 195 your support level that it needs to pull back to, if any at all. If not, you can see it did break out after hours from $2 to 204. And we had a double top at 204. And I'm gonna put a little, well, I'm not gonna draw nothing in there, but you can see that 203 area. So we're gonna get up to about the 208 and we gotta break that 208 come, come uh, Monday morning. But this is a stock that both Vegas and I have been talking about for a few days now. And if you have got in this trade when we started mentioning it, you would be up almost 50 cents on this trade. And this is CVRS. We really enjoy doing these aftermarket reports and I'm gonna give Miss Vegas, or she's gonna give herself the final words. And this is Sunday's edition. Go ahead, Miss Vegas. You yeah, like so did you have a bonus today, Jim, or no? I thought well, you said you're gonna share a bonus play. Yeah, I'd like to talk about one if that's okay Okay, let's you. hear it, let's hear it. This is called QTT. Oh my gosh, I love QTT. What a good pick. Okay, let's yep. hear about QTT. So we're going to pull up the chart here. We're going to pull up the uh, one year and take a look at it. We were down here at four bucks and it's been nothing but positive from there on out. Been mentioned in the room by a few of our best traders and uh, just very impressed with this trade right now. We have a trend from this $4 area to a double top here at 1563. I do believe it can break that 1563. If not, we have a low support right here at 1435. But I'm definitely very bullish on this trade. So let me look at the 20 day. And you can see the double top area that we broke out of Friday. And then after hours, it ran all the way up here to 1725. I would not doubt 100% that if it does pull back any at all, any at all, I mean, we did pull back to the $16 level, but if we could get one more dip down to this double top area at 1564, we're going to go ahead and meet them highs up there at around $17 and maybe 1725 and continue on upwards. 
but I'm very bullish on this trade, especially in the past three days where it's ran from 1168 all the way up to 1725 after hours on Friday. So let me repeat, low support, I'm thinking 1564, anything below that's gonna be a strong buy. And then we gotta break that resistance level between 1698 and 1725. And that's QTT, that's our bonus play of the day for next week. Add that to your watch list. Okay. Well, I just want to thank everyone for subscribing and even resharing the video and for commenting and definitely for coming to the room to visit. Uh, we love helping people. That's what it's about. And, um, you know, we just love seeing people come by and uh, interact with us because I like to interact with people live. It's hard to just do it on video. Uh, I like to engage with people directly. I've even, you know, spoken to so many people uh, personally, um, you know, that have reached out and uh, feel good, like to know that I'm helping someone or help them get refocused. I think Jim had a talk with someone the other day that was just going to quit. And uh, I think they had a little chat and I think Jim told me that they got refocused and had a green day the next day. So, you know, sometimes it's just getting some proper guidance and support to help you. And, and really, that's all we care about is just helping people. So um, our room's not just a typical chat room that just yells alerts. It's very educational. We do screen sharing. We share the reasons why we like it. We explain the support resistance. We educate you in real time about the charts. So like I said, it's like you're going to a stock market school. Um, it's not just, you know, oh, here's a trade. Here's an entry. Take it. <clears throat> or here's an idea. And then people just, you know, take it, but they don't understand what's going on behind it. They don't even know where to exit. So we try to give people resistance points and it's for you to make your own decision your stop loss your your decision if you're going to take a trade um we just share the ideas and share our thoughts about it at the end of the day no one has to trade anything they can just learn in real time and that's what i love about what we do so i want to thank you all and uh nice to see us uh, nice ladies coming into the room too so um, you know, there's no ego in this room. The men are so great supporting us and I love seeing all of this and I want to thank you all so much. And I think Jim also is doing a live YouTube today. Jim, are you doing a YouTube today? Yep. Yep. At 2 o'clock right. Eastern time. We'll okay. So for those of you that want lesson. a live session with Jim, he's doing one today at two o'clock Eastern standard time. If you can't make it, not a problem. It'll be recorded. Yeah, I'm going to just talk about how I look for how I start my daily watch list and uh, so simple moving averages and and should be about an hour, an hour and a half. All right. Well, that sounds great. Look forward to the session. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on the edition of Stocks. We definitely love Stocks, but we love the viewers more. And uh, we will definitely do another video tomorrow for Monday. I hope you guys have a good trading day. You guys have some really great ideas. And we look forward to talking to you guys again. Have a great Sunday. All right. Well, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. And I do want to say one more thing that really excites me is a lot of the, we have, do have many ages in our chat room, many age groups from the young 16 year olds to all the way up to college students, to, to the, to the uh, disability people, and also people that are in retirement age. And our biggest attraction is gathering the women traders into the room. That's so we do have International uh, Women's Day all month. Keep that in mind. And I did pull that up on the website. Please go to that to our I Love Stocks website. And this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is March seventeenth, two thousand and nineteen, and we love stocks. Thank you.